have here today, and I'm going to walk around the park and do some walking with different things. I'm, fi I'm doing my Moza Mini P review <laughs> with my motorcycle. So I went out. It was a beautiful day. It's January 30th. I think it's January 30th. I think today's the 30th. Let me check my phone. Speaking of phones, this uh, January 31st. It's Sunday, January 31st. I'm so busy, I forget the days. So, speaking of phones, this Mini P right here allows you to use your phone, use your camera. I'm going to be using in my bag of goodies here. I have the, I have the G85. I'm going to be using the G85 and walking around and vlogging with the G85, little Panasonic mirrorless camera. Um, I'm not using, I'm shooting right now on the, on the Nikon Z6 with the, uh, 24 to 70 F4 lens. I plugged this purple Panda microphone directly in to the camera. By the way, this is by far the best audio investment I've made ever. I mean, and I've got Rode Video Mic Pros. I've got all these different things. This purple Panda, if you want a vlogging mic, buy this purple Panda. It's absolutely the best. You can plug it, I can plug it into the phone and vlog with it with this little wind muff on it. And it's very windy out here today, so I put the little wind muff on it. You can vlog in the phone. You can vlog with the gimbal in the phone. You can put plug it into either camera, the Z6, the, the G, it works with everything. And it sounds, how does it sound? I think it sounds absolutely fantastic. For the mic that it is, it sounds unbelievable. There's no power required. I plug it into a Sony recorder and use it for weddings. I uh, use this Purple Panda into a little Sony mini recorder, put it in the groom's pocket, record the wedding vows, everything. This thing's awesome. So back to my Moza Mini P review. Now, let me explain something to, to y'all. I picked up... If you saw my other quick review that I was unhappy with was the DJI uh, OM4, Osmo Mobile 4. I think that's what it's called. The DJI OM4. I got that gimbal thinking, okay, great. I'll have something that I could throw this camera on and record real quick. This little phone, throw my phone on, record real quick. And it is faster to set up. I'm going to, I'm going to set up this here with the G85 first and record with the G85. Walk around here, do some recording with the G85 and just, you know, trying it out, walking around with the gimbal. I thought I could, you know, just use the phone and do the recording. But the problem is the app on the phone is worthless. It's not worthless, but it's worthless compared to what you have on the phone. Like it won't allow 4K shooting at all. Uh, it does 24p, 4K 24, or 1080 24p, but it doesn't do short 4K at all. And it doesn't do, in, it, in the image stabilization, uh, everything's in 1080p. So if you're shooting 1080p, it's, what's the point? I have image stabilization in the phone for 1080p. I don't need a gimbal for 1080p. I need a gimbal for 4K. Anyway, I'm getting into the weeds too quick. Let's take a look at this Moza mini p first so it comes in this little styrofoam box thing and you saw it i just stuck it right in the side bag on the bike and it's awesome protects the gimbal it's a little rattly in there but i've already taken the little side thing off so you pop it open you guys have already i'm not going to do a review of of taking it out and all this stuff i'm going to show i'm just going to show you how fast and easy it is to set up so first you take it out and you take the the tripod out i'm going to set it up on this box so it's easier to set right here. I'm sure you can see this because you can, I, I hope you can see this. You should be able to see this, 24 frames. So you z just stick that sucker on there. It comes with a little tripod as usual. You just twist this thing out, boom. Yeah, it'll set on the box. It sets on the box for balancing. I can balance it real quick. Now I'm gonna balance it with the G85 first. Hook up this mic to the G85, walk around and vlog with it. Put my cameras back in the camera bag. Walk around and vlog with it. And then I'm gonna do it with the phone and show you what it's like with the phone. 
I didn't bring my GoPro because I think you get the idea of how it works. It'll work with a GoPro too. So basically you, you loosen this first screw, slide it up, and now it'll turn sideways. Then it slide it over. And I remember it's close to, it's close to the end. I can kind of remember where these things go. There's a lock on the side. You unlock that and now it spins around this way. Now it's handy to leave it locked to, to, to stay, to set it up. In other words, it's handy to leave it locked, set it up. So it's also has a little clip here. You slide this little clip and now this piece slides over. So basically it goes like this, this piece you loosen, slide it over like this. And now it's, it's almost, it's almost ready to start stabilizing. So you take the camera. Speaking of which, I need to tighten the screw on it. I'll use my key, I think. Take the camera, a G85 mirrorless camera. I better not use my motorcycle key and break it. <laughs> that would be very bad. I'd have to call my daughter and have her dig my key out, my spare key out of the drawer. Now what I found is the G85, if I flip it out, if I flip the screen out, it's too much weight on the outside. I have, I, I'm sure I can figure out a way to balance it by sliding the camera that way all the way and get it right. But let's try that now. Let me do that now. I'm going to try doing it where I can see myself. So this is the first time with me. I've only set this thing up once or twice. I, I got it. Uh, it came in the mail Thursday. It came Thursday. I set it up on, I plugged it in, let it charge overnight. Oh, if I plug it, if I move it all the way. Now the mic's on this side. Got the gun. So if I slide the bracket all the way over, close to the, close to the side, then I should be able to balance it with this on the side here. So basically you go like this. It's not basically, that's exactly how you go with it. So you go like that with it, and then you balance, then you start balancing. So how, how you balance it is pretty simple. So this thing here has to, has to slide back because it's nowhere near the center. So see, it's already closer to the center now. See how it's going? Now it's front heavy. Getting there. Move it up a little bit. That's already getting better. See, it still, it's still heavy to the to the left. See how it's pulling to the left. So all I do is just loosen the screw, slide it to the right. There. Yeah, I can make it work with the flip out screen. So I'm balancing it right in front of you. In this time, I'm not cutting this short. I'm not doing anything different. I'm balancing it right now so that you can see exactly how this thing balances now see it's see how it swings forward it needs to go back you gotta move back and get the center of gravity closer to the center that's getting pretty close Yeah, that's getting pretty close. It's not perfect, but it's pretty damn close. I think the motors would probably be able to handle that. See how it's not, it's not really moving a lot. It's basically just setting right where I set it. I can drop it, set it, and it stays right where I set it. That's how you balance it. Look, I, I'm balancing it for the first time, basically, right here. Now, this isn't perfectly level ground, this box. So it's not going to be... It's still a little bit little bit left heavy try moving it just a hair now see now it's swinging to the right too much that was just just that little bit was too much there we go that's pretty stable that's pretty straight it's not perfect 
I've seen other people say, oh, here, I got it just right. And I was thinking, well, that's not really just right. It can probably use to go up a little bit. See, now it's, now it's falling lens forward. But see, the problem is I can't go any further back with it. It won't, tilt, it won't go back any farther. So I got to drop it down a little bit. It's one of those things you got to fiddle with it a few times, a few minutes until you get it right. Oh, I forgot to flip the lens, lens hood off. Let me take the lens hood off, see if it balances better. Oh, there we go. Yeah, see now without the lens hood, I don't really need the lens hood on it. Maybe I've got that part backwards. That might be, that might be what it is. I do. <laughs> yeah, duh. That's why I had a hard time getting it balanced that way. All right, so I'm gonna have to cut this out. Let me, let me stop this and restart the recording. So let's try this, <laughs> let's try this again. I had this pointed in the wrong direction. There's writing on the side of the, on the sides of the, of the little parts there, there's writing on them, and you gotta make sure that writing is upward. So I had this in the act, actual exact opposite direction of where it had to go. So it's falling backwards. That's why it was, it was freaking out when I turned it on. I was like, wait a minute, something's not in the right direction. This little thing here is turned all the way around. It can detect that this side piece was flipped over the other way. Because the motor's upside down at that point. With a heavier camera like this, it does take a few minutes to get it just right. See, it's still falling backwards. But I might be able to drop it down a little bit. Come on. It's actually faster with the phone to, to, uh, to level. All right, I'm gonna put the lens cap. I'm gonna put the lens hood back on because I don't want any flares. And then I'm gonna um, see. So I'm gonna get the lens hood back on just so I don't get flares. And then I'm gonna rebalance it a little bit, move it back just a hair to make up for the lens hood. There we go. There's a lot of people out here today, and I'm glad there's a lot of people having a good time. That's what we want, it's people having a good time. All right, over to the left a little bit. There we go. That looks pretty damn, pretty damn stable, right? So no matter where I sit, no, it's still leaning backwards. What you want is you don't want to be able to set it in place and have it not move. In other words, when you, when you set it someplace, you want it to stay there and not move. That's good. It's staying there. It's not moving. Staying there and not moving. Won't face completely up, but pretty damn close. Stays there. Doesn't move. All right. That's it. Okay. So now let me turn it on. Now it will not freak out. There we go. Perfectly level. It's ready to go. Now, it's not used to the... It wasn't completely level. So, so there's an app, the app on the phone. You can also control the camera with the app on the phone, which is the coolest thing. So all I gotta do is launch the Moza app on the phone. Exit Android Auto, because I was riding on my bike. So you go to the, there's two, there's two apps for the phone. One is the, one is the, um, The Moza one app allows you to move the camera and stuff with the phone and use the a joystick, right? Use it like a joystick. And the other one does the, um, yeah, it's getting a little vibrate because it's not sitting on. Seems to be working a little bit harder than it's supposed to be. It's vibrating. So we'll do uh, calibration. That's not it. Gimbal setting, motor setting, auto tuning. There it goes. Now it's going to auto tune the motors because it's working. It's working harder than it needs to. 
So this is a little setting you put on the phone and it does this little thing. It balances it, checks it, weighs it, and it'll come back and tell me if it's balanced enough once it gets done. Yep, there we go. So now it's not vibrating at all and it's exactly where we want it. So I, obviously this is something you wouldn't want to, uh, if you were in a big hurry, you wouldn't want to have to sit here and balance this thing every time if you're changing from DSLR or mirrorless camera to a phone. But once you get it set for like the phone, you can leave the little phone bracket on it, you can fold it up and then you can go, okay, I can quickly just slide this whole bracket out, see, put a little mark where you do it every time. If that's what you use 90% of the time, put little marks on there, get a little marker, a little white marker or something, a little piece of white tape or something, put it on your little bracket, and then you can just slide it right to the same spot every time. Within seconds, you can have this thing balanced out. It, it's not perfect, right? As far as it takes a few, so it's, it takes longer than the, than the DJI Osmo that you just pop the phone on. But I got it to go back and forth on and off the phone. I took the phone off, I was using it to do this. I popped the phone back on and boom, two seconds later, I had the, I had the gimbal running on the thing. So now I'm gonna uh, go out and get some shots with this, with the um, G85 on this gimbal and take a look at it. Let's go see. Let's go see what, let's go see how this thing works. Basically, here I am vlogging with the camera. Oh, this, take this off. Microphone's pulling on it, there we go. Okay, so now I'm vlogging with the G85, walking around and it seems to be working pretty good. I can walk around and vlog with the G85 right now. I can hold it out. I have to hold it out pretty far though. So this would be much better with like the, uh, this would work a whole lot better if I had the, the um, Z50 because then I don't, wouldn't have to be quite so far. Is this thing all, zoomed all the way out? Yeah, that's all the way out. Oh, there we go, that's all the way out. It wasn't all the way out. So it'd be better with the Z50, but I'm gonna walk around. Let me walk over here to the water. I'm gonna walk over here to the water, check it out. Now this is, I'm using this Panda mic plugged directly into the G85. And uh, I've got the screen flipped out so I can see myself on the G85, which, Everybody likes you to have the screen flipped out, right? <laughs> Is it recording? Yeah, it must be. Yeah, there. I can see all the. I can see all my settings now. So I'm going to walk across over here to the water. I'm out here at the park, and this is me walking with the Moza Mini P and the G85 for a vlog test. And it seems to work very, very good. I'm getting a little vibration. I don't think it's quite stabilized. See the little vibration? I can feel the motors working. I don't think they're um, quite strong enough without this thing getting exactly, exactly right, which I'm gonna change the camera anyway. And this is something I would set it up on a nice solid table to do if I was gonna actually do it. But you can, you can do a lot with this thing. There, now the, the motor stopped. It's working fine now. So it's got a little bit of, like I can walk fast. Here I am walking fast. So what do you guys think? Is this good content? <laughs> do you like this content? Is it something you wanna see more of? <laughs> People are getting their boats out. Here, I'm gonna flip this thing around. I'm getting some stutters on this thing. People out here. It seemed to like it. Actually, it was getting less vibration when it was facing me. So anyway, this is basically walking around with this. Now I'm gonna do the phone next, which is, the phone will be a lot smoother because it's lighter and I haven't had, I didn't have this thing set perfectly on the, on the tripod stand. So anyway, this is vlogging and walking with the G85, the Panasonic G85, which I'm seriously considering just changing up to the, uh, 
changing up to the Z50. The, uh, of course, you go, I go up in a sensor size, so it gets a little bit better shallow depth of field, but it is what it is. How do I look on the camera? Pretty good. Not perfect, but it looks pretty good. It seems to be getting my face. Um, what's this camera set to? Movie mode. Yeah, seems to be seems to be doing a decent enough job. This is at 4K, uh, 24p, I think. Let me sit, let me check it. 4K, 24p. All right, so now I'm shooting 4K, 30p. I was just going to let you guys see what it looks like. This is 4K, 30p. Moza um, shooting with the G85 and I'm going to walk back over to where I was so it should be a little bit smoother I'm still getting the uh, I'm still getting the vibrations in the in the stick but it seems to be working pretty good people are probably wondering why I'm walking around with a motorcycle jacket of course they probably know I'm a motorcycle that's what you do there's the water <laughs> looks good anyway so I'm gonna walk back over by the motorcycle, change it out to the camp, to the cell phone and see what happens with that. But it's light. I can walk around with this for a long time. <laughs> it does not weigh much. It's a pretty light gimbal and it's, and it's, it's not shaking at all now. So let me walk over here and let this guy in the truck pass. But see, it's not quite wide enough for me. I wish it was a little bit wider. And see, in this sunlight, it's, whoa, washing out. So I don't have, uh, I don't remember if I had what my settings were on the camera for exposure. I probably have it locked. Yeah, I must have exposure locked on the camera. Let me check, let me check it real quick. All right, so, so far I'm getting a lot of this vibration, but as soon as I start walking and start walking with it, it's just fine. So I just dropped the exposure to negative so that it wouldn't be so overblown in the sun. Seems like it's getting a little bit overblown in the sun, but I'm not really that worried about that with this, uh, with this G85, because I'm gonna sell it and get the other one. I mean, I think, I gotta check the weight on the other one. This thing's like 780 grams with the lens. Uh, and this, this, stabilizer will hold 900 and something grams so it should be fine it should work this gimbal should work just fine with this camera so and it is it's working but it seems like it's close to the limit and it's only 780 grams but could be how i balanced it balancing it sitting on the uh on the box on the ground isn't really the best solution for balancing but you can see what this looks like when i walk around and now I'm back at, like it's freaking out. I'm back at the motorcycle. So I walked over here. I took a walk. Now I'm going to try and get, let me get a couple shots of that and see how this thing looks. See, it's still vibrating like crazy. Yeah, it's not letting me, it's not letting me undersling it. So I normally go up underneath, but it's hitting the camera. So the camera's hitting the back for undersling. I think it's supposed to go back a little bit. It's not quite right. So I'm going to turn it off and, and put the, put the, uh, the other one on there. So you get a pretty good idea how this, how this works. But let me get a shot. So you can have an idea. This does work very well. But I'm gonna get I'm gonna get the um, my camera on my cell phone on here and see what I think of it. All right, here we go. 4K 30. Now to vlog with this thing, so I'm shooting 4K 30 and I'm recording on the mic. I rebalanced it a little bit because I was getting some jitters and I realized I had it. I had the camera flipped on the wrong way. That's what, so I'm. It's new to me too. You know, you guys. I'm trying to show this thing to you and I, I just got it. Like I said, Friday. So, there's FPV mode and different modes, but let's let's do vlog. So when I flip it around to vlog, I can basically vlog with the camera. I can see it, and it's nice and steady. What do you guys think of this footage? It's pretty good. I think it's pretty good. So I'm gonna 
I'm gonna walk around and do some vlogging with it, just like I did on the G85. But this is just using my LG V60 Thin Q. This is the LG V60 Thin Q. Doing some vlogging with the purple panda plugged in with a little Nerf ball thing. And that's it. There's having a birthday party or something over here. Kids playing all over the thing. Maybe I'll walk out to the water. My motorcycle's over there. It's way over there. So anyway, this is, I'm trying to give you guys my impressions and my review of the camera uh, or the gimbal using, using different cameras, different settings. But see, the cool thing is I can use 4K 30P on this and it's right in the app. It works fine. So the buttons and everything on the front work just fine. I don't remember all the different settings, but you can hit buttons to go FPV mode, inception mode, or the spin, you know, just a bunch of different stuff. It has, whoa, I almost tripped. It has all the same kind of, um, it all the, has all the same kind of features that the, uh, the DJI has, but more because you can put a regular camera on here. You can put uh, a GoPro on here. You can add more weight to it. In other words, you could put a microphone directly on it or a light. There's a screw hole in the front of the little bracket. So you can mount the bracket on the, to the back for the cell phone. You could technically screw a little light to it, have an LED light on there, do some vlogging, you know, capture some stuff at night if you're shooting in, in low light and you want to have some more stuff on it. You could do all that. So that's pretty cool. So let me stop and do some, uh, some more stuff. Hold on. Okay, so now I'm going to walk in, four, this is 4K30 on my phone, on the LG V60, and at any time I can double click, or triple click, and go into vlog mode. So it just spun around, and now I'm vlogging with the camera. See, that's, to me that's pretty cool. So I can be shooting either thing, and it doesn't just flip, it doesn't just flip to the front facing camera, which I don't like, now I can't see myself. But I can see the camera, and I can tell where I'm looking. I'm looking at the camera. So there's no reason for me to... I don't technically need to see the see myself. It's nice to see yourself, but I don't need to see myself. I'm sure I could just hit the button and go into selfie mode and shoot it like that. So let me try that. I'm going to shoot... I'm going to flip it over and shoot in selfie mode. All right, now I'm shooting in selfie mode, but the difference is in selfie mode, I'm... Yeah, you need the camera on that side. So in selfie mode, I'm limited to 1080 30p, but that's shooting with the front facing camera. So I can see myself. You could definitely shoot like this if you were, if you weren't shooting in 4K, you could shoot selfie mode and I can see, I can run. Just to show you what the gimbal's like, I'm jogging up here. here at the water out here look at this beautiful water all right all right now i'm going to do some 4k um tracking i'm going to track some things first i'm going to double click go back to selfie mode or triple click go back to selfie mode now the camera turns back around i'm back on selfie mode but see selfie mode with the back facing camera is much better you got 4k 30 if you're using a, if you're using a Filmic Pro or something like that, a different app, you can obviously shoot more. And technically, I could just launch the the in phone camera app and shoot an 8K if I want to, with a gimbal, which is something you you still can do on the Osmo, but you lose all the features. Just like this, you lose the features if you're shooting in in uh, with the with the app. You're losing the features of being able to do the things on the on the gimbal but the difference is the osmo doesn't have as many buttons on the on the gimbal itself so you have to go back into the app on the osmo on the dj osmo uh the om4 you have to go back into the app to make changes i can actually do a lot of there's four buttons in a little ring around this the the zoom in and out buttons do stuff even without it connected to the app so you can use the buttons on the on the Moza Mini P to do the things that you need to do without having the app open. So that's kind of cool. Um, 
so far it works pretty good i haven't gotten any vibration i got a little bit over there um when i had the phone flipped around the other way <laughs> by accident so now i see so the camera needs to be on the far opposite side of the motor which makes sense if you're shooting with a super wide angle lens which i'm going to do here in a second i'm going to go to my super wide lens and shoot and let me see what that looks like Okay, so this is, you can change the app to pro mode and go into pro mode and now I'm on the wide lens in pro mode shooting 4K 30. I believe you can still drag the box around. There's auto and pro and pro mode gives you the, all the options of different frame rates. So you can change to 24 or whatever. You can't shoot 8K. My camera shoots 8K, but like I told other people, I'm not going to shoot 8K. I've got no reason to shoot 8K, but so far this thing's awesome and I can hold it up for a long time. I can shoot tons with this thing. So that was one of the things when I was shooting, I shot a wedding and I was needed a camera and I grabbed, I grabbed my, uh, my battery died. So I grabbed my cell phone. You got a cell phone camera, whatever camera you have in your pocket, use it. So I grabbed my cell phone, put it in 4k and I was shooting some shots and I got some pretty decent footage. But the problem was, was it turns off steady cam in the camera when you shoot 4k. It turns off the, the image stabilization. It only works in, in this. So this would be handy to have this thing set up. So right now I could leave this set up or set it up beforehand, have it setting there, and then just pop the camera in, pop the or pop the cell phone in, and it's already balanced, start shooting with it. So balance before you get ready to go and then put it back on. So let's let's go, let's drag a, a box around the, my motorcycle and I'll show you what that what that looks like. All right, so I've got the box draw, draw around my motorcycle. So now it's gonna stay on my motorcycle. No matter what I do, it's staying on the motorcycle, which is pretty freaking cool. Now see, it's going to the side. It thinks it's going to the side of the motorcycle. So it's losing the side of the motorcycle, so there. It's back on, there we go. It's back on the motorcycle. So now, no matter, I've got a little too close, but see, I'm just walking sideways. It's turning itself onto the motorcycle, it's keeping on track on the motorcycle. So, that's a cool shot, see? That looks pretty neat, doesn't it? Let's try this uh, slow motion stuff. I'm gonna something my the app doesn't do it's 4k 60 but i can do it in my in my uh in my original thing in my in the actual built-in phone app and then i can actually double click and i can vlog at 4k 60 with the gimbal so that's kind of cool i don't really need to do 4k 60 with a gimbal but still you never know you might want to do 4k 60 with a gimbal there you go you can do 4k 60 with a gimbal right the only thing is when you put it in in not using the app hitting the record button doesn't do anything so you got to touch the screen and just for gets and shiggles here's 8k 24p gimbal stabilized now if i was crazy and wanted to vlog i could vlog in 8k with this with this gimbal and walk around and talk about stuff like my motorcycle and what i'm doing and do typical vlog things in 8k which i'm not crazy so i'm gonna have to crop this in to, <laughs> i'm gonna have to put this in i'm gonna zoom in and show you what 100 percent looks like in 8k so you can see how much bigger of a frame it is than 4k which we're already i mean shooting in 4k is overkill for most people especially when your most videos on youtube are watched on a cell phone so 4k kind of overkill i watch youtube videos on my tv through my nvidia shield so 4k is useful for me on there so i like watching them in 4k but for most people most people watch them on their cell phones i watch most of my videos on the cell phone too I, i'm not gonna lie 
All right, so YouTube, so I'm now I'm tracking my own face <laughs> in in the vlogging mode, so I can see my face. So, hey, you guys, so let me know what you guys think of this video. If you think it's helpful, I, let me give you my impressions. Okay, from a vlogging standpoint, this thing is freaking awesome. With a camera, with a cell phone, this thing's awesome. With a, with a small camera, it's a little bit more work because you have to get it, you have to get it balanced just right. Now, I got it balanced pretty good. I got it balanced pretty good and it was still had some shaky spots, but I was able to make it work with the G85. Does that say I would want to use this over my big one with the G85? No, I would still want to use my, my big one for, for those shots where I really, really needed to get it. Now tracking my face, this isn't really working very well. Let me flip this around. Let me leave you guys with this. So for a regular gimbal walking around doing vlogging with the phone, this thing is ridiculous. It's awesome. It folds up small, it fits in a little case. It didn't take long, to, it took a few minutes to, to balance. It takes balances a lot faster with a cell phone because I've gotten almost no shaky footage a couple times, but most of it's been perfect with the cell phone. Um, with the camera, it's a little bit more work. It works, but it's uh, you got to get it. You got to get the balance a lot better with the with anything heavier, a heavier device like a camera, or, you know, a mirrorless camera or something. But I'm sure if I got it set up how I wanted it and got it set perfect and put little marks on there and pr set it each time and got it set up in like where I was actually not sitting outside on the ground trying to set it up, but actually sitting at a nice level table and setting this thing up, I could do it pretty quick. So if I was shooting a wedding, say, and I had a, I wanted to set up two setups, one for the camera, one for the cell phone, I could do either one. And technically, this footage looks so fantastic on the cell phone, I could shoot the whole thing, you know, just use this as a cell phone gimbal to get shots. And you can do slow motion, you can do all kinds of stuff with it. So. I give this thing a big thumbs up over the over the DJI. Now, let me change this though. The DJI I think is a different gimbal. The DJI OM4 is a gimbal for moms and girls that don't want to have to fiddle with trying to I I say girls. That's that's wrong because guys is fine. I would use it actually if I didn't give two flips about changing cameras and I didn't care about it, I, I didn't have a gimbal before, so I didn't know what it was like to balance a gimbal. Then I would probably go with the OM4. Easy, pop the magnet on the back, stick the thing on there. You're up and running, it auto balances itself, you're done. And it works fine with the phone and it works every time, it's very reliable. The problem is, is the things for Android, the use for the phone is, makes no sense. For the phone, it only does stabilization in 1080p, which my phone is already stabilized in 1080p. If you didn't have a phone that was stabilized in 1080p, or if all you shot was an older phone, I guess it'd be okay. But with the way phones are nowadays, you don't even need gimbals anymore. You can walk around with most of them and have them perfectly stable. The only time they start falling is at, in 4K. And that's with all phones. As you go higher in the resolution, you shoot in 8K, it's unstabilized. You shoot in 4K, it's unstabilized. A lot of times they only shoot 4K 30. They don't even shoot 4K 24P. So there's a lot of other drawbacks to using just your phone. And that's where a gimbal comes in, where you can walk around with a gimbal. Plus it's handy. You can walk around. It actually becomes a selfie stick so you can keep your phone farther away from you. It actually works out great. And it's a tripod. You can set it down and talk. You can draw a box around yourself and set it down and do a vlog like that and sh show people stuff. You can have it follow you around. You can set it up and and walk around and have the camera just follow you. I didn't I didn't show you that, but it will just follow a subject. It does track fo tracking. It turns the gimbal around and tracks as you walk. I walked with it and had it uh, track on my motorcycle, but you can also set it on the little tripod thing, track something, a person or something, and it'll it'll follow them as they walk by. Like I was I was going to set up a tracking shot when I first got here of me pulling up on my motorcycle and have it track it. But the problem was, was it would be better with two people because I could pull up, you could, somebody else could drag the box around me and then I could pull uh, through the frame and have the camera pan and follow me. So by myself, it wasn't so easy. So I, I thought the heck with it, I'll just set up my other camera and, 
and go with it. Anyway, give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Thumbs down if you didn't. What do you think about the gimbal? Is it something you think you would buy? I'm going to leave a link in the description where I bought it. I bought it on Amazon. I think it was like 200 bucks. Now, the, the, um, the OM4 was $150, and I sent it right back. I bought this one, and I'm definitely keeping this one. But I'm a fan of Moza. I have a Moza Air 2 for my, for my big cameras, and I use it all the time. I love that gimbal. I love it. It, it works. The only problem I ever had was with batteries. But anyway, this and this thing, the battery supposedly lasts like 20 hours. So I'm going to get back on the bike and go for another ride, get going. So, uh, all right. See ya. Take it easy. Thanks for watching, YouTube. Take it easy, guys. Later.